Okay, so diary, blog, captain's log, documentation, journal, marker of time in my history, existence, whatever you want to call it. Here we go. 40 days, 40 nights, day two. Redo from four days ago because I screwed up two days ago, but things are looking pretty darn promising right now. I get rid of the gum. I'm addicted to the caffeine. The lesser of the two evils. I drink caffeine. I don't know. I can't give up everything. It's about discipline though because caffeine does not help the brain at all. It gives a little spark ignition to the neurons in the brain, the neurotransmitters, but it fades away fast. And if you're like me, as it fades away fast, every day you start to recognize the accumulation of the amount of caffeine that you drink. This is actually green tea stuff. I think I'm gonna actually pause this and go get me some real caffeine before we start this diary. I'll be right back. Seductively, so, Yoda. Is, uh, uh, my other thing is, you know, people have to talk about bags in the pot. Domestic violence, also. Tea, no sugar, four bags. Yeah, I can't give up caffeine, I can't give up everything. Yo, check this book out. Made this in the psych ward. This is my book of the journey. I tripped out into the psych ward. There's a lot of heartbreak in here too. And I seen God and I wrote it all in here. I show you this because I have a huge bin like this big filled with notebooks through my whole life. What does that mean? Not a damn, not a darn thing. If I don't reach redemption, my whole existence up to this time means nothing. Now bring that up because I have a, this whole bunch of names of people I know that died. And the eeriness, when I look up their name on Google, and there's absolutely no trace of their existence. Did they believe in God? Speculation that a few of them might have committed suicide. I don't think so. But I fight for them. I do. I fight in honor of them. This is my 40 Days, 40 Nights book. I like it. It's light. Will I be able to fit everything in the next 38 days in here? I don't know. There's the seven heavenly virtues. So I'm giving up a lot of things. I'm an extreme dude. I always have to have something caffeine right now because I'm doing so good this is like it's it's psychological it's like 20 times a day now when I'm stressed I go for caffeine really it averages right now freak four to five cups mixed up into doses one cup in the morning okay I'm going to quit caffeine, so stay tuned. Please subscribe, too, if you haven't, because it really helps me, and I really appreciate it. Name's Blair, if you don't know, you should know. It says it up there. But, uh, I'm going to quit caffeine in a few days on this 40 days, 40 nights journey. By the end of this 40 days, 40 nights, I'm going to be a self-disciplined machine, holy warrior on the angel path. Not only am I walking away from sin, which is a good thing if you do that, because I'm learning some of the rules of the way this thing works. 
to harness the e power of evil. It's probably not good that I'm saying this. If you want to be an evil person, you want to practice the seven deadly sins as much as possible. But if you're just like a normal person, that you want to be a good person, but you don't realize you're actually trapped. These things are set up, uniquely designed. There's seven sins that human beings fall into. There's seven virtues, heavenly virtues, that combat the seven deadly sins. The more you are encircled in the seven deadly sins, the more screwed up your life as a human being is going to be. So you could do what I did and start trying to give up these sins and back away from them. And then as an added bonus, you do the seven heavenly virtues you practice on a daily basis. So let me hit you with this. Because what I'm saying is, I want to prove I reach redemption. I want to prove that these seven heavenly virtues practiced and the subtraction of the seven deadly sins in your life harnesses power. And the word power, people always want to say, Power is a negative thing. Uh, money is the root of all evil. There's a yin and a yang to everything. People need power. All the people that changed the world had power. Buddha, Mother Teresa, Martin Luther King, everybody. It's not a bad thing. So, here's the seven heavenly virtues right here. Number one, humility. Selflessness. It's the opposite of pride. Self-worth. Selfishness, pride, not good. It's all about me. Selfishness, pride, my self-worth. When you live a you life of humiliation, it's the opposite of pride. You live a selfless life. You care about, you empathize with another living entity, life form, an animal. You see an animal hurt, you could feel it. You're not selfish. Eh, it's not me. It ain't me. I don't care, it ain't me. Number two, liberality. Or, in another word, generosity. The power of giving. Generosity, the opposite of greed. Greed, oh, oh, all this yearning for these earthly possessions. I want jewels, I want gold, I want this car, this money. I can't give this money to my sister that can't pay the rent. It's my money, it's my money. You know, greed. <laughs> Do we really wanna, I mean, our time here on earth is so short. You could actually define human life as nothing more than a short period of time to the universe might as well be a second. Whether you live a year to a hundred years, you can actually define human existence as nothing more than time where it's like a test of where you're going to end up your soul when it's over. I shouldn't even be alive, so this is why my my skinny butt's got to follow these rules, because I was kept here. It's a privilege for me to still be here, so I got to follow some simple rules. You know, I shouldn't even be here. This is borrowed time right here. So I got to follow rules, very simple. So there's no point in being like Bernie Madoff, like, I gotta get a trillion dollars, man. I gotta get that trillion dollars. Like, it doesn't mean nothing now, obviously. Number three, my favorite, because this is the one I battle with. Chastity, the opposite of lust. And I wanna clarify myself. I ain't out there having sex. Pretty much it's almost been a decade for me without that. So I do have a decent amount of restraint. 
I would feel awkward. I wouldn't be able to have meaningless sexual relation. I wouldn't be able to do it. Which is a good thing I'm proud of myself about it. But if you do, I'm not judging you and saying that you're a bad person because something that is so enjoyable, how could you say no to it, right? Chastity is about the th controlling your thoughts and your actions, not just your actions, thoughts. So, I guess I'm probably wearing the chastity belt because I realize I'm not meant for love. I get it. I understand. It makes it easier. I get it. it. Has different plans for me. Number four. Here we go. Meekness or patience. The opposite of anger. Anger is a bad one. I don't really have anger in my life. I'm a lucky person. Forgiveness. Mercy. That's meek. She'll inherit the earth. You ever hear that? So, patience. Anger is not good at all, unless you want to be a devil. Then anger is good. But if you want to better yourself and not suffer in the future, let go of the anger. Number five, it brings us to, we're coming to a close. Temperance or abstinence. This is a biggie for me. Addictive personality. This is the opposite of gluttony. A whole bunch of caffeine in my bloodstream. I can't stop. I can't stop thinking about caffeine. I got this tea. I got the green tea. I got the coffee in the morning. I go out to the store. I want a Red Bull. It's the last of the dying breeds of my vices. I will be saying goodbye to it soon. Gluttony. This is a very uh, good one to take a look at. Overindulgence. Like, it feels good. I'm going to tell you this from my experience. It feels great when I get more self-disciplined and I don't overindulge in stuff, when I could say no to stuff. And these foods, especially in America, that they make, all these additives are addictive. Kind of fits additives, addictive. Addictive additives. Salt, sodium nitrates, MSG, all that stuff. The sugars, the fats. It's all, oh. And you are what you eat. That's something you should live by. You are what you eat. That's a good one, I think. It deserves an applause. Okay, where are we at? 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 Number six. Number six. Kindness. Love. This one's a little confusing for me. It doesn't, it doesn't have that impact. It doesn't hit me like a ton of bricks. I guess I'm a pretty kind person. I think so. I think I exude a decent amount of love. But to, to combat this, combats envy. Envy is a weird one to look at. I need to learn more about that. But to combat envy, jealousy, feel kindness, love. You feel happy for someone, for what they have. It's a good one. Number seven. Diligence. This one's good. Diligence, also known as persistence. You don't stop. We persist. We are relentless. This combat's sloth. So, 
it is good to persist at something positive. And it combats sloth and all these, all these seven deadly sins and seven heavenly virtues. They come together like strings, like a spider web. You practice one, you find out more information, you keep going up the ladder, you keep gaining more knowledge, you keep becoming a better, more advanced, more intelligent human being. It's a good thing. I'll be back. Get at me, Blur. Peace.